Hi YouTube, Watchify here with another video. In this video, I'm gonna go over my experience with owning a time grapher and provide my opinion on whether you might need one or not. So first off, time graphers can be easily purchased online with some of the cheaper models costing under $200. The time grapher consists of a base unit with the display and settings controls, a stand with a built-in microphone that connects to the unit, and of course a power supply. It's used to measure the accuracy of automatic movement watches only, and it does this through the highly sensitive microphone it has. In terms of settings, I always leave the beat rate on auto. I adjust the lift angle depending on the movement, and I set the test period to 4 seconds, but you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, you could also mute the volume, which is nice. When a casual watch buyer purchases an automatic watch, they wind it and set the time and begin wearing it it's possible that this new watch is their only watch. I'd say that unless the accuracy was off by a lot, let's say 60 seconds a day or more, they probably won't pay much attention to the accuracy rate. And even if they did notice an accuracy problem, they may be fine with just adjusting the time manually every few days or so. However, if this person owned a time grapher, they could put the watch on it and measure its accuracy rate themselves. You can do this for various positions. The most common positions to take measurements are dial up, 12 o'clock down, crown down, and crown up, as these are the common positions the watch will be in while being worn on the wrist. In addition to seeing how fast or slow the movement is running per day, you can also get information on the amplitude of the movement. Basically, amplitude is a measurement of the rotation of the balance wheel expressed in degrees for one watch beat. Generally, a higher amplitude indicates a healthy movement with amplitudes in the 275 to 315 degrees being considered pretty good. In order to measure the amplitude, you'll need to know what's called the lift angle of your particular watch movement, which you can look up on the internet. So for example, a Seiko 4R36 movement has a lift angle of 53 degrees, and that's what you would set your time grapher to. You can also tell what the beat error of the movement is. An ideal beat error which is measured in milliseconds is zero as it means the clockwise and counterclockwise swing of the balance wheel are taking the same amount of time to occur. However, I think that you can have a beat error below one millisecond and still consider the movement to be healthy as again we're only talking about milliseconds of difference. So if you had a time grapher and knew how to use it, you'd be able to tell relatively quickly if you have a healthy movement or not, and make an informed decision on whether you would want to return the watch to the seller. Or alternatively, you could try to correct and fine tune the accuracy rate and beat error rate yourself. As you might imagine, we're now starting to venture into watch nerd territory here. Um, how this is done, at least for all the watches I own, is by removing the case back and adjusting a lever on the movement. Uh, there's actually two levers. One adjusts the accuracy, so if moved in one direction, the movement picks up speed, and it loses speed when moved in the opposite direction. The second lever adjusts the beat error and is the trickier of the two to adjust, so I would suggest you work on fine-tuning the beat error first, if you have a problem with both beat error and accuracy. This is because when you adjust the beat error lever, the accuracy of the watch changes. The reason I think very few people would even do this is it's questionable how opening up the watch and adjusting these settings yourself would affect your manufacturer's warranty. If you would be risking voiding your new watch warranty, I can see how most people wouldn't bother doing this at all. I think if someone only owns one or two watches, if they ever noticed an accuracy problem with their watch, they would probably think about taking it to a watch repair shop. It's not clear to me how much you'd be charged for this service, but I'd imagine it would be around $100, even though it's a relatively simple procedure. It'd be great if you can find a repair shop that would only charge you like $20, but I think we have to consider that the watch repair business, they have overhead costs that they need to account for. If they are charging you around $100, it could be that you only paid $200 for your automatic watch, so the cost of regulation would be half of what you paid for the watch. 
If you own a larger amount of automatic watches, let's say you have five or six, now it might make sense to purchase a time grapher and learn how to regulate watches on your own, as the cost of the time grapher would more than make up for itself over time. Just know that if you purchase one, you could be entering a rabbit hole of obsessing on trying to regulate your watch to run as accurately as possible. There's a thing called COSC or COSC certification, which basically means that the movement is certified to be accurate within cost standards of minus four to plus six seconds a day. These measurements are taken over the course of two weeks and under various temperatures. Cost certification is something you usually find only with higher end and expensive luxury sport watches. Is it possible to fine tune your common Seiko automatic movement to run within cost standards? Well, yes, if you're really lucky. Seiko's stated accuracy rating for their less expensive movements is usually plus 45 to minus 35 seconds a day. That's a wide range of accuracy and I think Seiko does this to cut down on the amount of warranty returns. This means that if my new watch is losing 30 seconds a day and I'm unhappy with it, they could respond by telling me that the movement is within their stated accuracy standards. In reality, Seiko movements are almost always better than their stated accuracy rating, so I think it's a case of under-promising and over-delivering on their part. You'll find that plenty of people online will say that they've successfully regulated their 7S26 or 4R movement to run within 0 seconds of accuracy a day. My experience, however, is that with common Seiko movements, there's a variance on the time grapher based on the position of the watch when it's being measured. So zero seconds lost or gained while in the dial-up position won't mean that level of accuracy while wearing it on the wrist throughout the day. I just try to get the watch to run as accurately as I can for all four common positions. Generally, I'm happy with anything plus 10 seconds a day or below for the automatic watches in my collection. And given the choice of having a movement running a little fast per day or running a little slow, I'd rather have it run a bit fast as it's easier to sync up with atomic time. No matter what the time grapher says, the real test is to sync the time on your automatic watch to the atomic clock in the morning and check on the watch later in the evening. You don't have to wait a full 24 hours as if 8 hours have passed and the watch is now running 2 seconds faster than atomic time, you can assume the watch is running 6 seconds fast per a 24 hour day. I use an app on my phone when syncing my watches. I've heard that when buying a new watch, there is a break in period for the automatic movement, so this means the accuracy rating out of the box won't be the same after a month or so of running, so that's also something to consider if you're thinking about regulating your own watch. I've also heard anecdotally that at least for Seiko's, the more expensive 6R series movements run more accurately out of the box than the less expensive 4R movements, and generally this has been my observation as well. I don't have any insight into what manufacturers like Seiko or Orient do in terms of checking accuracy before the watch leaves the factory, but I would imagine there's some sort of check of the movement before they're placed inside the watch case. I've noticed the adjustment lever is in different positions across my various watches and that makes me think that someone at the factory adjusted the movement if only to make sure that it falls within the stated accuracy range. There's a lot more to talk about in regards to automatic movement accuracy and the value of owning a time grapher, but I'll wrap it up by saying that it's not a tool that most people would need to have unless they had a watch repair business or were a hardcore watch enthusiast. For me, it's neat to have one, but also a pain in a sense because now I have to measure each one of my watches, which then leads me to trying to fine tune them. For most people, as long as their automatic watch is relatively accurate, they're fine with it. In fact, it's rare that anyone ever mentions accuracy rating or provides the rating on pre-owned watches that they advertise for sale. I'm probably one of the few people who actually do that and provide a picture of the watch on a time grapher when I'm trying to sell one. That's going to be it for this video. If you found it interesting or helpful, feel free to leave a like, comment, or even consider subscribing. Of course, I wanted to thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.